uh, I am also learning MuleSoft. I come to know about MuleSoft and I got interested in it. And uh, I am also attending these meetups and uh, learning further. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Bupen. Yeah. else uh, uh, interested to introduce yourself or should we start our event if anyone hasn't received this uh, okay santos uh, i think i have given you presenter access if you haven't then then let me check again Okay, fine then. So, like uh, at the end of this uh, meeting again, like uh, uh, we can go with this, like uh, you can introduce yourself or whatever you want to discuss, we, we will do. Okay. So, let me start with uh, my introduction and then uh, we'll speak about this event a bit and then we'll start this particular event. Okay. So, uh, let's start uh, with my introduction. So, hi, hi everyone. I am Ravi. I have total uh, six plus year of experience in uh, integration technology. So like I started with Oracle integration and then I moved in Mulesoft and currently I am working with uh, Delight Hong Kong. Okay. And uh, I'm working as a integration lead. Okay. So and uh, about today meetup, like uh, we are going to discuss this uh, Redis connector. So uh, like uh, in Mulesoft, we have uh, two way to do caching one we have this object store and another one we have this redis connector so there are some limitation where we can use this object store so we have one alternate also like we can use redis connector so sananda will give you a brief introduction about this uh, redis connector and at the end of this event like uh, uh, we will do like uh, we will have some question answer session and then uh, we will have one trivia queue also. So uh, like every participants will get opportunity to win training vouchers. We will select three uh, through this. Uh, okay, so I have created one Kahoot uh, uh, game, you can say. So there we will play this trivia event and three winner will get a uh, training voucher from Ubisoft. Okay, fine then. Uh, so, Sanand. Uh, Ravi, Ravi, sorry to interrupt. Like, I just want to add one thing. Uh, if oh, anyone yeah. has, uh, if anyone has win the voucher in next uh, last thirty years, uh, sorry, thirty days, please uh, don't play, because uh, if if you get a voucher, still Mulesoft will reject that one because uh, it it tracks like if you win the voucher in uh, last thirty days. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, allow yeah. allow others to allow others to like uh, get. Uh, grab this opportunity and get a voucher yeah so uh, yeah uh, and even if you want to play you can play but uh, like uh, if you will be in uh, first three then like you need to inform us like uh, you you won all you already won one voucher in last 30 day so we'll play in, in your name okay so even if you want to play you can play but uh, at the end of the event you need to inform us so we'll play one lucky draw on your name. So other participants will get opportunity. Since even if you will apply, then Mulesoft will reject if you already uh, like uh, got voucher in last 30 days. Okay. Okay, fine then. So yeah, thanks for this information. Okay, so Sananda, now now it's uh, like you can start. Uh, thanks, uh, Ravi. Thanks everyone. So. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, Ananda, we can see. Okay, thank you. So, uh, starting on with the uh, Mule Software Redis caching, first uh, let's uh, come on, uh, start with uh, what exactly is the meaning of caching. So, uh, what, is, uh, what is caching and why is it uh, required? So uh, in computing, uh, what is a cache? A cache is basically a, a high-speed data storage, which uh, uh, stores data 
so basically uh, uh, we use caching primarily to uh, uh, store data which is uh, maybe you can say static in nature and which is reusable or maybe uh, there can be multiple uh, hits by or requesters for that particular data and uh, which uh, may be uh, uh, not changing for a certain interval of time maybe around uh, let's say for uh, uh, one day or two day we can be caching or something like that so those are the scenarios in which we primarily use caching so uh, what happens in caching is uh, a cache generally uh, uh, it's a fast access actually so being a fast access it stores data in uh, hardware uh, such as ram etc and uh, uh, primarily, it increases the data retrieval speed and performance of your APIs. So that is one of the reasons why we use cache. So as you can see from the presentation uh, here, uh, uh, I have uh, given a, a small screenshot uh, picture wherein I, uh, it is defined when we are requesting the same data, what happens. So basically, the uh, when we store the data in a cache and uh, every time a request is the a requester hits uh, with the same uh, request the uh, the total transaction time keeps on decreasing when uh, the data is cached whereas uh, when n number of users are hitting the same data the uh, the load or uh, the load on the server may be more because each time we are going on hitting the database to fetch the data so the overall time required for an end-to-end -end process to complete uh, exceeds maybe the required uh, time which uh, is defined for that particular api to uh, work upon okay so that is how uh, uh, that is one of the reasons why caching uh, is used so uh, coming to mulesoft caching uh, Generally, in MuleSoft, uh, we can have uh, various uh, form methods of caching. Now, the thing is like uh, in caching, we define a cache scope and whether cache scope can work independently or not, and whether it is absolutely required to have an external or global reference to be defined while uh, we use the caching scope. So basically, the uh, cache scope, uh, as uh, I have already defined, it is used for uh, repetitive requests for the same information. And also primarily when, usually even in our projects which we have seen, we have a huge or a big, a very huge uh, payload which needs to be retrieved from the database, wherein when we are executing an, a store procedure or a query, the time required to fetch the uh, data is uh, is quite huge so those are the uh, that is when we decided to cache that data because that data might be required not just in one api so basically we may fetch the data from uh, a system uh, via a system api and then cache it in a certain uh, common api which api can be invoked by several other you know different app users or different requesters so that uh, in a certain in that particular interval of time uh, all the requesters are able to fetch that particular uh, a huge amount of data in a, a stipulated or a small time uh, of transaction so that is where the uh, uh, now coming to the cache scope so uh, yes, we can definitely, uh, uh, I mean, use a default uh, caching strategy instead of uh, actually requiring uh, an external object store. So uh, the different methods of uh, caching in Mule can be an object store, uh, usage of an object store. It can be an in-memory caching. It can be persistent cache. We have persistent cache, private cache, etc. So now coming to uh, uh, the situation, as in uh, 
what are the benefits of an object store so but, uh, actually what happens is uh, the object store v2 which we define uh, it uh, primarily it is used when it is used with a cloud hub this particular object store can be shared between different uh, uh, applications within that particular cluster so uh, in this we can get a provision of that store being shared but what happens uh, primarily uh, is that uh, in this kind of a distributed kind of a situation or a clustering mechanism we in different projects might not be using the cl uh, cloud hub as the for our deployment of our applications so there can be situ scenarios where we are deploying uh, through uh, i mean uh, open shift or some to some other cloud where we are using the docker or the kubernetes concepts so what happens in uh, those situations we can use uh, an internal object store but that to what happens we cannot use the v2 v2 no longer uh, functions uh, in those uh, uh, in those situations where we are using an art, uh, a runtime fab fabric might be where the containerize, uh, containerization concept comes into play so in order to facilitate that uh, so what happens is uh, in a scenario like this when we use a caching and we deploy uh, the particular apis to uh, uh, to a higher environment wherein each container might consist of multiple pods what happens is that in those scenarios each of this object uh, they uh, uh, i mean each of these api they function as uh, they function locally so uh, they basically perform a kind of a private caching which is uh, uh, maybe which has its scope within that particular pod beyond which we will uh, not i mean uh, it cannot be like uh, when a request is coming if we have three or four pods in cluster within which each of this uh, four uh, pods you have the same application maybe but what happens is that each of this application in each of these pods they function as a uh, localized or an uh, cache which has uh, no relevance with the the caching in the other pod so uh, what happens maybe uh, we what happens is um, we have uh, you know hit uh, for example a database and we have extracted the data and we have cached it so uh now when a request comes since they are in a uh, uh, it's a scenario of load balancing uh this particular request may come and hit any of the three or four pods when one uh when this request is uh hitting say pod a and we are fetching the response from the database and store uh, storing the response in that particular pod a there the caching the cache scope is uh, restricted to that particular pod we define a uh, maybe time to live over there we define the expiration interval we define uh, the entry time interval and everything there the maximum entries everything for that particular cache similarly now when the next request come it might not hit pod 1 it may uh, come and hit pod 2 again in that case for pod 2 uh, the same thing happens the caching uh, mechanism is uh, occurring for pod 2 similarly maybe for pod 3 now all the three pods are uh, performing the process of caching for say in database it was now defined that this particular data will stay uh, or will uh, be static or may uh, will not change for maybe the next two hours now since each of the request has randomly hit all the three pods each of the pod will be having different 
time uh, i mean different uh, start time and end time that is the time for the object store to expire and the beginning of the transaction which gives different time to live for all these three object stores as a result uh, what happens if there is an overlapping of the time uh, i mean wherein there is a transition of the data to be changed from the database and to be fetched here uh, there is a probability that the requester expecting a different uh, will be expecting a certain result and will get a different result because of this localized caching in each of the pod so uh, this is the scenario in which we need to think that the caching should be uh, so performed so that the data is uh, cached or stored in not in the in memory uh, uh, which is uh, you know uh, existing in each of the pods rather uh, for an external uh, uh, engine caching maybe and uh, in memory engine which is external such that the data first gets stored there and from there the caching happens to each of the pods so that is when uh, the redis connector comes into play so coming to redis redis is basically an open source in memory uh, data structure which helps in uh, uh, caching and since it's caching the processing uh, data uh, the, the processing speed of the data is high uh, it also facilitates, uh, you know, uh, several other features, such as uh, it works as a broker or it helps in message que queuing, and uh, it also has the clustering capabilities. Now, uh, in Redis, the uh, data is specifically stored in uh, key value uh, format. So, uh, one of the biggest advantage of uh, using Redis is not just that it's, it is an external in-memory source which can uh, be levitated for caching mechanism when uh, the uh, concept of containerization comes into play, Kubernetes comes into play. So this is where the V2 object store actually uh, cannot facilitate this process. That is when we use, uh, uh, we prefer using Redis. So uh, coming to Redis, uh, uh, there are uh, the key value concepts which I was speaking about. Now, here, as you can see from the slides, uh, the kind of the uh, it defines the kind of uh, data structures or the data uh, types which can be accepted uh, by uh, for caching in Redis. So, as you see, we can have hashes, we can have strings, we can have lists, we can have sets. And uh, there are uh, several other operations, like we can uh, publish a particular uh, uh, set, we can publish a particular list, it can be sorted, uh, it can be a particular key can be deleted, we can also check with the time to live or the TTL and the uh, uh, time at uh, we can define or set the expiration time for a particular key value pair. And there are many further operations. I believe not all the operations are yet accessible uh, through, uh, I mean, uh, all the operations of uh, Redis are not yet accessible in MuleSoft, but most of those which can fit into our industry requirements are primarily present. Uh, so uh, here uh, for Red Redis, uh, we can actually configure Redis as a custom object store. And also we can uh, directly use Redis outright as a global cache. So without further, uh, you know, getting into the theoretical part of it, I would like to start with the a small POC or a use case, which I have done. Primarily here, I didn't get that uh, time to uh, uh, explore the, I mean, uh, to show you the custom object store usage as such, wherein we can uh, invoke the uh, Red Redis connection in our object store and use it. Rather, I have uh, prepared here uh, a sample to show the different functionalities of Redis, wherein uh, we can... Just a moment. Let me show you. 
the uh, different uh, properties or different functions of uh, Redis which we, are, which we can use, such as setting the key value pair. Uh, we can fetch the data. We can uh, check whether uh, the particular key exists, what is the time to live for that, whether we can publish and all. So uh, let me share uh, my uh, screen with you all for apart from the presentation. Just a moment. Please let me know if you all can see my AnyPoint Studio. Uh, is it visible? Yes. I can see. Okay. 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 Thank you. So uh, as you can see, I have uh, developed a small uh, code. Uh, I have defined a RAML here. Uh, it's it's a it's a uh, the basically uh, this particular POC deals with books, and uh, uh, it's like uh, depending on the fic the type of uh, book, the books are segregated. And it has a uh, the particular book has a particular book ID, and it comes under if the book I uh, it comes un under the type of book it is, maybe uh, whether it's a fictional or it's a technology based or spiritual. So that is how uh, uh, I have uh, created this very small POC on this. So this is my uh, RAML wherein I have defined uh, the different uh, endpoints for this. And different methods uh, like uh, I'm, I will be performing a delete, uh, get, and a post for uh, uh, this particular, you know, this POC. Uh, so, starting with this. Okay. If you see, uh, first we'll begin with the post. Uh, uh, a POC on post method, uh, which also will cater to a few of the, yeah, which will also cater to a few of the operations which we can use of a Redis connector. I mean, uh, uh, Redis. Okay, let me. So here we, I have used certain loggers uh, to first check whether we are fetching the value or whether we are getting the proper uh, request then we uh, i have kept a particular uh, logger to check whether the particular um, that particular key exists or not and what is the time to live for that key and uh, if the particular key exists then we will be fetching the data if the particular key does not exist then in that case we will be uh, setting the data so we uh, this is the reason and uh, we will be logging what response we are getting. If it is particularly a set kind of uh, uh, operation or which is being invoked, we usually get an, a response like uh, OK. And if it is a get kind of an operation, we will actually uh, receive the value against that particular key. So let's see what happens. Yeah, hi, Sananda. Uh, meanwhile, uh, like I can see there are a few questions in chat window. So okay, okay, first question that we have, uh, what is the difference between caching and Redis caching? OK. And uh, what type of data structure we'll use using in Redis caching? OK, so, uh, so uh, should I answer or you will you want to answer? Whichever way, no problem. Okay. You may proceed. So, Okay. Yeah, Ajay, uh, Ajay Santos, I can see your question. What is the difference between caching and Redis caching? 
So actually casing in MuleSoft, like we have one component for casing. And this Redis casing we use uh, as a, like whatever functionality we have in object stores, same thing we can achieve using this Redis, okay? So it's not a casing uh, component. So Redis we use in place of object store. And what is object store? We, uh, we can store data in the form of key value here. So basically, uh, 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 the question was asked by uh, Ajay Santos. Ajay. So Ajay, uh, the uh, basically the thing is like uh, we can do, we can actually perform caching or the caching strategy can be defined without using any object store. Okay. So that can be a simple uh, caching strategy, just a key value wherein we can generate, uh, there are key generators. If we explicitly do not define a particular key, they take a SHA-256 kind of for key generation. So that is a plain and simple kind of caching which we do, just we define the caching scope. Like I was showing in my presentation, we only define the caching scope there. Okay. So uh, that is one way in which we can perform caching. The other way which is advisable or maybe, I mean, see, uh, it basically depends on the requirement of the project in uh, uh, or the demand of the request, request whether or when shall we be using an object store or when shall we be just uh, performing a, a simple reference strategy, caching strategy. So uh, we usually use an object store like uh, 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 like I defined previously, uh, suppose we, uh, you know, uh, we have, I, I'm giving a more, uh, I am not going into the uh, basics, but a generic uh, situation or a scenario which we usually face in our uh, industries. So primarily when we perform uh, uh, you know when we uh, create our codes and then we promote it we usually have a single server maybe so, and we perform testing in on premises first and then we promote a code or we deploy it so in that case we are actually not able to understand what the requirement of object store then because there is a single server and uh, the, there is a certain testing team who will be testing our apis and there will not be uh, uh, many hits for that particular uh, uh, this thing. And since the API is, uh, uh, you know, present in a single uh, pod in a particular container and there are not multiple replicas to it, so always the request will penetrate through one particular uh, 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 API. Now, when we are further promoting it to higher environments, maybe like pre-prod or production, the number of users for that particular API uh, abruptly increases uh, multiple folds. So what happens? That is when uh, in this uh, containerization concept also, we have a concept of auto scaling and we auto scale the pods uh, to maybe uh, three or four times. So we may have three pods which are functioning as single servers or single entities and each of them having your project or your API within it working individually. So what happens when they are working lo as localized structures, like I had in, uh, explained, there uh, can be an issue uh, that uh, the requester might have a chance of getting an incorrect a response or there can be a situation that the caching strategy didn't even function because that was the first hit for that particular API in uh, that pod. So when these kind of scenarios come into play, we use an object store. That object store is located somewhere outside that particular, uh, I mean, out uh, in as an intermediate maybe between your pods and the database for say, that is where we are placing our object store. So the data is directly first from the database getting cached into your object store and from there it is fetched and the caching mechanism is happening there and from there it has been referenced to all the pods. So that is where this issue of incorrect data due to a difference in the time to live 
or due to the localization or a private caching is being uh, you know eradicated so now when i'm speaking about an object store the object store v2 can uh, has its scope in cloud hub so then in that case how will we meet to the needs when we are using uh, different maybe open shift uh, azure uh, or cloud or uh, anything like that aws so or uh, when there is a concept of con containerization or runtime fabric or uh, when we are using the mule runtime fabric that is when we prefer using the redis uh, as a in memory caching okay is there any other question uh can you show the redis connector configuration surely i will show the redis connector configuration shashank uh do we need to directly download the that yes we can actually that dependency uh, we can include in our form we can directly download it from uh, the exchange one thing which you can do or else you can even google it and you will get that uh, xml segment of uh, the redis you can import it into your form and start your project and you will get it imported in your project that is one way you can do it okay that is how you can get the redis connector also devendra uh, how db is getting synced to redis cache if anything in db changes in between how will it get replicated to the cache yes like the uh, anurag like uh, this is the thing which i have uh, defined like uh, for one particular hit if there is any uh, i mean we are requesting or invoking uh, the data from the database and we are keeping it into the redis cache so that will have its particular time to live what is time to live the time difference between the first request hit to the database and retrieval the caching time and the expiration time which we have defined so that time time difference is defined as the time to live so within that scope of time if there is a change in the data in the database that change will not be reflected in your cache so basically the concept of caching will not change with the change in data in your database so till the time to live which you have defined for that particular uh, cache that cache will keep that uh, uh, response as a static response anurag okay we can use an object store and make a persistent kind of a configuration shashank yeah, in redis also we have option like we can make it persistent yes. and non persistent yes yes uh, ravi can you, can you answer to few of the yes. questions meantime yeah, yeah, yeah. i think yeah. somebody has asked for the redis connection so how i have done it let me show yeah, yeah. so i am answering all those question you can continue with yes it. yes Okay, so uh, for this particular POC, I believe uh, my uh, uh, my entire screen is visible now. So for this particular uh, POC, what I have done, I have just uh, created an account in the Redis Lab, and I have used the Redis Cloud for this enterprise. You can also download the enterprise software version, install, and uh, get a localized server. What I have done here is I have used the enterprise cloud version. It is very simple. Uh, just uh, create your, uh, uh, give your sign up, log in here, and I have uh, uh, created. Uh, they they give you the provision to define a database, and once you define the database, this is the connection parameters for Redis, which I am uh, currently showing you all. So uh, we can, for simple POCs like this, we can actually uh, you know log in through to the enterprise cloud, and they give you a provision of up to. 30 mb i believe uh, which is huge if uh, for documents to be published and cached and uh, that thing so i created a database name and uh, i have given a particular this thing 
I have given all my credentials and they created this particular connection parameters for me. From here, what are the connection details which we will be requiring? Are uh, we will be requiring this particular endpoint? Here I have been given the particular password which will be required to connect to it. And uh, certain various details have been given, uh, given. Here we can see the metrics, the usage and everything, the uh, latency and hit ratio and everything will be defined. The used memory is also defined here. As you can see, it is defined here. This is the memory usage and everything uh, you can get from here. So here certain logs can also be defined. I, I didn't uh, uh, you know, explore the logging section for this. Uh, so basically from the configuration, if you see, this particular configuration has been created for me and this is the particular endpoint which I will be using for my POC. Now coming to my uh, POC on this one, let me see whether this got deployed. Yes, this has been deployed. Okay, now coming to the global elements, let me first show you the Redis connection which I have created. Uh, for, uh, uh, I mean, if it is not, uh, uh, I mean, we are not given the provision of a clustered or a uh, sentinel kind of uh, this connection, we only get the non clustered connection when. Now, uh, in this case, I think we have to, uh, the clustered one, we need to purchase or something like that. I am not sure. There might be a licensing incurred to it, uh, a cost for licensing incurred. And uh, for this currently, I am since I am doing the non-clustered, I also didn't get the provision for the object store. Uh, uh, custom object store uh, wherein I can implement the Redis connection. I was getting certain error for that. So here, if you see, this is the connection config, uh, the Redis configuration, uh, which I would like to show you. Mm -hmm. uh, we can actually keep these connections in a property file here under, uh, we can keep a property reference here and we can use it. But for my benefit, I have kept it here. And so this is exactly, if you see the host, host is exactly this particular host which I have got as an endpoint here in the Redis cloud. And uh, uh, the access code is similarly the code which I have, uh, which has got generated and defined for me. And the port number is this uh, port and this is a, uh, from this alias I have picked up this URL, I have picked up the host and the port and I have defined it here. So these are the connection parameters and the connection type is a non-clustered one, it is not clustered. So this is uh, the Redis configuration which I have defined. Okay, uh, now coming to the POC specifically. If you see, like I have defined for the POC, uh, I have kept certain loggers for the benefit of understanding where exactly my flow is traveling, whether at all the uh, particular uh, operation is being performed or not, uh, and whether this is successful. First, let me show uh, this connection, test connection successful or not, let me test the connection. Okay, we can see that the connection is successful and let's proceed with the uh, invocation. Okay, so these are certain endpoints, so I mean, this is the postman which I had created. And so first I will uh, begin with the I'll begin with the post API. Okay, so I have uh, uh, since it's a book API, my endpoint you can see it has been defined here the type of operation which i'm doing is post and uh, uh, the data format is json and uh, it's in a key value format and the key i have kept it maybe as uh, uh, the key is nothing but the book id which i have defined it is 012 and the type of book uh, uh, is a fiction excuse me so now i will be hitting this particular api and see what is the expected result.
Okay. So here we are getting uh, this as a response. Set response is fiction and key is 0, 1, 2. To facilitate the understanding, let's check into the logs. Now, let's see what the loggers uh, has to say. First is the payload. What is this logger defining? This is the incoming request, uh, which is defined here. OK, so this is particularly logging my payload, which is uh, 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 being, I mean, the post payload. That is the first logger. Coming to the next is exist. This is the functionality in Redis which we are uh, performing first to check whether we are trying uh, this particular key which we are trying to post whether this at all exists in uh, as a key value in Redis or not. So the uh, the response format. If you see here, I've kept it in a certain uh, target field named valid and the payload is here. This particular exist operation returns a Boolean. Uh, it can be true or false. So if we get true as the Boolean, that means that particular uh, uh, this thing exists. This key exists. So I am getting a true here. Now when we are getting a true, what is my operation I have done? If we are getting a true, then we will be fetching the data. Uh, OK, sorry. In between, I have also checked the time to live for that particular, uh, uh, I mean, uh, that particular key value. And I found that TTL for that is particularly 3461. Uh, it's in seconds. OK, uh, I have logged that. TTL value and my operation was if the response from this exists boolean is true then we are going to fetch the value okay so basically what will happen in this particular logger we will be able to the logger uh, this thing is wrong it shouldn't only be set it can it should also be get so here we will be getting the response. So let us see what we have received here. Yeah. So that particular uh, field already existed and that had a value set as fiction already. So that is what we are getting here. Now, this is the get operation which happened in which uh, the payload which we received here has been stored in this particular variable resp and that is the response which we have mm, obtained here in the... uh, yeah, anything ravi oh sorry 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 oh no it's okay it's okay it's okay. okay okay now what we will do is we will be changing the uh key value maybe let's change it to something else maybe zero one two one two three let me keep it Let's skip the type of book to be spiritual. Let's check whether this particular uh, uh, this particular entry exists or not. If it does not exist, we will be getting a false from a is exist operation, and uh, this will be as uh, set into here. It will be going to this particular operation will be uh, uh, in this choice condition. It will be not uh, getting into uh, this valid. It will be getting into the default operation that is set. And then it will be storing that particular uh, value against this particular key one, two, three. Let's try this then. So here we are trying to set this particular one let's see yeah okay so previously you have seen the response which we had got here the difference in the response this particular key already existed the value was fric uh, fiction and it already existed in our redis cache so what happened it had provided me with the response as uh, set response fiction now, if we compare this with this particular operation, we see the set response is OK and the key is 1, 2, 3. Usually, we get OK as the response if particular value is being set. 
so which depicts that this particular operation has taken into uh, this particular uh, operation has been effective so here if we see in our loggers now this is uh, the logger for the second hit here we can see this was our uh, request payload we performed uh, an exist kind of an operation where we saw the response was false the time to live was two and uh, since the set operation has occurred it has fetched me a response of okay and this okay is the output from this set operation which has been set into this particular response i believe uh, this particular operation was understandable now to check on to this uh, what we can do see this is i am showing you the postman the reason being uh, now you see the uh, transaction time required is 678 ms so the one prior to that it took 1177 ms which depicts that actually the caching mechanism is effective and is been and is occurring so uh, uh, this is a kind of post operation which i have shown uh, for this so now let me try to delete some keys also for this operation uh, uh, what i have done is first i have checked whether that particular key exists or not if that particular key exists uh, if the boolean is true only then will i shall i try to delete that particular key after deleting the key i will also check whether i am get, uh, being able to fetch any response against that key or not if it is a successful delete we will get a null response and if at all that particular key does not exist it will simply uh, provide me with a boolean as a response so let's try this particular operation now okay uh, i have already i had created a delete payload let me delete something let me delete one two three so this is my postman for the kind of operation that is delete this is uh, the rest delete operation which also invokes the del operation here of uh, the redis connector now let me hit this particular api and see what is the response first what let me clear this particular console because it is becoming difficult to otherwise make you uh, to depict this okay uh, okay one two six five ms is required we are getting key as one two three uh let's see what had happened okay first we had checked whether the key existed or not it is true then the delete operation was performed and therefore the number of keys which was deleted was one the delete operation was performed on this particular key which we had uh, fed as an uri as an URI param here, that is one, two, three. So against this particular key, the value was deleted and this particular delete operation deleted this, uh, 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 deleted this uh, uh, pair. After that, what we have done, I have tried to fetch the value against this particular key uh, to check whether this particular operation has occurred or not. As it is this particular response of one depicted that yes, this was a successful operation, but still I, for a uh, case of surety and to check what happens if we try to fetch uh, the value against this particular key is something which I have done in this API. If we go into the console, we will see we are getting a null response here. Okay. Now what we will do, we will again try to delete this particular deleted key and see what happens. What is the response? here this is uh, this was the response from uh, that exist operation here and directly i have passed that same payload uh, in the default and uh, the, as a result of which we are getting this as a response here so this was the response for uh, trying to delete the same key once again okay so this was the delete operation 
now i will show you all a, a get operation in which i have performed uh, i have also shown another operation which we can do in redis that is i have also implemented the pub sub here uh, it is basically functioning as uh, redis can also uh, perform the uh, publish and subscribe mechanism usually if uh, we uh, it is a local publish we can say not a broker publish uh, where uh, an asynchronous publish has been performed and then that can be picked up by multiple this thing we are publishing it into the same redis uh, i mean uh, server we are publishing the uh, 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 i mean sorry we are subscribing the published key and value from the same redis server in which we have published so these are the configurations which i have already shown you previously uh, the redis configuration this uh, connection parameters this was the key here this was the payload in uh, the variable in which we, i was uh, fetching the payload and then we, i was logging it here then i checked whether that particular key exists or not whether the uh, it is successful or not and then okay here i have a different concept which i have actually implemented i will be coming to that first let me show the operations which are implemented here the publish operation has been implemented uh, when we want to publish a particular uh, uh, this thing a payload we need to specify a channel so here i have specified let the channel be abc and my message which i need to publish i had kept that particular message in this particular variable which i have defined uh, here inside the message and uh, i have also defined the channel name and uh, uh, also i have fetched that particular value in this particular target value after this what i have done is i have if you can see in this particular if you see in this particular api i have also used a flow reference the flow reference actually uh, if we go to the reference is nothing but the subscription flow where the subscriber is uh, I have done an edit in line and I have defined uh, uh, the, that particular channel for that uh, uh, the channel on which the publish has been performed. I have subscribed to that channel and I have fetched that particular payload here and I have tried logging the particular payloads. So this is the pop sub which I have done apart from this. Uh, the concept which I have kept for this get particular get API is like i will be uh, providing here uh, with a uh, book name and the book id with the help of the book id first i will be able to uh, get uh, the uh, the type of book from the first get so if uh, my key is 01 to this particular operation will fetch me the value as fiction like i had entered previously here in the post api so it should be fiction then i have used that particular fiction as the uh, i mean a uh, key to set a value called this particular book name or maybe some other or maybe some other book name so uh, here that for, uh, first it will check whether that particular key name in the name of fiction exists or not if that particular uh, key exists what i have done i have tried to fetch the value against that key called fiction from here and then i have appended the response of the two and i have published it so this was the logic let's see what we get as a response now let me clear the console Okay. okay let me see the response okay first if you see my logger screen the console you will see the book type here from the first logger i have fetched the payload wherein uh, the key and the value are 012 and fiction why it is uh, 012 
zero one two because zero one two was a book ID with which I have first hit this particular get. In this transform, if you see this payload, the key was set to uh, from the URI parameter named book ID that was set as the key that was used in this particular operation. From here, I have fetched the value against it. The value was fiction. Now, what did I do? I have checked whether this particular response was empty or not. If it was not an empty payload, I have entered into this particular operation. I have again set the value of this operation as the key for the next operation. So the value, the key now becomes fiction. I have logged it. Then I have checked whether anything exists against this particular value or not. Uh, so this exist operation logging has been done here. And uh, this exist operation response was stored in the field where did it go? called RUSP. So in the logger, if you see the key exists, value will be inside this RUSP. We should get a true if the key exists. From here in the logger, we can see key exist is true and the key was fiction. Okay. Now what we did, we use this key as a search key to fetch the response from the next uh, get operation, which I expect. Okay. So this is the payload. Now in this transform, I should be getting something from here. And I have logged it here. So let's see what the response was. Here. So the book type and the name fiction was giving me the book as Jane Eyre. So this particular book has been then published. So what I have done here, this particular uh, was uh, the, uh, I mean, I have uh, created a single string clubbing in the uh, the type of book and the book name as a string and I tried to publish it simply. So here I had defined the channel and I have defined the uh, particular variable. Once I have uh, done the pub, I should be able to see a subscriber message somewhere. Here, if we see uh, the subscription, I have kept a logger just to log the payload from the subscriber. The payload in subscriber is payload. Let's see what we have got here. Here, the payload in, uh, yeah, we have got this things. The payload in subscriber, this is something true which we get from the publish. And the payload in subscriber has also been retrieved as fiction and Jane Eyre. So this particular uh, uh, string was successfully subscribed. And hence, we got this response here. OK, uh, so this was the get operation in which so till now we have looked into get operation, exist operation, TTL, publish, subscribe, delete and set. So these are the few operations which I could, you know, uh, prepare a POCs for you all and give you all a brief about. Apart from that, Redis has a lot of other operations which we can actually explore such as we can uh, actually get from a hash, we can set in a hash, we can pop from a list, we can uh, pop from a set. These are a few other operations which we can also explore. We also have an expire operation wherein we can set the timeout uh, for that particular specific key after which that particular key should not exist. Also, I have missed showing you all that in this particular set operation, I had also set the particular time to expire uh, uh, as 180000. So uh, uh, this was a small POC which I had done uh, for this port uh, to portray or to show this particular Redis uh, connector. That's it. If you all have any other questions and anything, you all may, you know. Please feel free to ask. Uh, over to you, Ravi. Uh, are you there in the call?
Yeah, hi Sananda. Oh, sorry, yeah, hi. Uh, no, it's perfectly fine. Okay, okay. So everything done? Like uh, yeah, your demo part? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, somebody has. Why were why were why was I calling it as a flow reference? I uh, I might not call it as a flow reference because if you see a subscriber already, it acts as a listener. And it would be subscribing just to perform an end to end. I had uh, called it as a flow reference. You might not call it as a flow reference, even then, you will get the response. Uh, that was a question from Dhananjay. Please show response headers of the response in this one response headers. Headers. Yeah. Okay, somebody wanted to see the response header. This is the response header. Content type I had defined as application slash JSON. Also in the RAML, I had defined that the incoming content type should also and the accept parameter should be of the type application slash JSON. Okay. Okay, so Ravi, over to you. I think I have, you know, taken a maximum of your time beyond the meeting uh, stipulated time. So Ravi, if you want to further proceed with it, I can stop with the screen share. Yes, um, yeah, just uh, thank you. Yeah, just give me two minutes. So now we'll play this trivia queue first, and okay. then uh, I will share some update. And then, yeah, we can wrap up. Just give me two minutes. So, meanwhile, if anyone has any query, then you can ask. Okay, so I think we answered most of the query. The source defined by that. Okay, yeah, I think he is having a doubt why, as to why I have kept it as a flow reference, and he wants to see what happens if I remove it as a flow reference and whether the subscription occurs or not. I believe I don't know whether if whether that is uh, his uh, requirement. Let so me see. Can... Let's see what happens. If he actually wants to know about this and if that can be shown to him, uh, let me check if uh, that is possible to be portrayed. Uh, meanwhile, uh, you may get the setup ready, uh, Ravi, for your further, you know, yeah, yeah. things. Yeah, let me let me do what. Let me see what he wants. Uh, Uh, and before trivia quiz, can we like uh, take few pictures of the, uh, this event? So, so let me. So, if anyone interested, so you can you can open your uh, like video, and we'll take uh, few images, and then we'll like we'll go for this uh, cohort. Okay. Okay, uh, I think uh, let me rejoin first. I think some network is so let me rejoin first. Yeah, thanks everyone. Okay, okay, so let me take first. Uh, Sananda, 
uh, maybe uh, like if possible you can you can also like start your video sorry sorry i think uh, i have even stopped the screen sharing uh, okay i had to show something to dhananjay also okay yeah. okay let me take this. okay fine fine yeah i'm done oh sorry uh sandeep i think you are muted and you are you were saying something yeah, fine. Uh, like, uh, yeah, I took, I took, uh, like, emails. So, so uh, Ravi, can I take a few moments from you and uh, can I clarify the doubt which uh, Dhananjo had? So, I, I, I think by mistake I had stopped sharing the screen, and like I, likewise, I had informed him that even if we don't take it as a flow reference, that will certainly be subscribed because the subscription is actually actually occurring through the channel. So, uh, let me share. Just a moment. Let me share the. Uh, okay, if my screen is visible for you, Dhananjay, uh, what I have done is I have removed that as a flow reference, the subscription. And since you know that uh, actually is acting as a listener it, in itself, it should be listening to the channel and it has nothing to do with the flow reference. And let me test and see what actually comes as a response. Uh, where was it? It was this one. Let me see. In that case, I should be getting some logger which defines payload in subscriber. If because this is in no way now attached to this particular flow, only it is attached through the channel. Let's see what the response was. So search was this. The uh, here is the payload in the subscriber is this one. So this was the response. So any other question which you will, which you have, this is something which I have invoked just now. If you can see, and this is the response. Okay, so this is something which I had to share with Dhananjay. And uh, over to you, Ravi. You may proceed with it. We are already late, I think. Are not audible. I think Ravi is not there. He rejoined, yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Hi, hi. Sorry. Actually, I rejoined. I, I'm not so like uh, there's some problem with my network. Okay, fine. Uh, so let's start with uh, this uh, Kahoot uh, event first. And then, if still, if, uh, if anyone will have any doubt, then we'll take that one. Okay, so let me share my screen. So can I confirm my video or not? Not to me yet. Not yeah, yet. Now, now it's oh, sorry, sorry. Is it visible now? Now it's visible. OK. Okay, now can anyone confirm? Okay, yeah, okay. Okay, fine. Okay, so let me start this first.
okay so what you need to do uh, first uh, in your mobile go to this www.kahoot.it okay and enter this pin and try to put your full name or like uh, some relevant name so i will able to identify So we'll wait for one more minute. So I think uh, we have almost around 40 participants. And okay, so yeah, still we'll wait for 30 seconds and one minute and then we'll start. So in your mobile, go to this kahoot.it, don't open in lab, otherwise you have to uh, switch your screen multiple times, that will create problem. So open this kahoot.it in your mobile and enter this pin. After that, uh, they will ask for your nickname. So try to put your full name. Okay. So we have almost 36 participants, okay. So I'm expecting almost 34 participants. already like uh, you have uh, already won this voucher within last 30 days you can play this game but uh, if, if you will uh, select as a winner then you need to inform us so we can uh, play a lucky draw on behalf of you so someone will uh, someone else will get opportunity to get that voucher Okay, so now I'm locking this game. Okay, let me check in chat if anyone unable to do. Okay, fine, fine. So I think everyone already registered. Okay, so here you will get question and answer both. You just need to answer in your mobile. Okay. Okay, so uh, like uh, fourteen answer we got correct. Okay. So we'll see leaderboard first and then we'll move for next question. Okay, so Sasank on top, then Kalyani and Tarun on next two position. So like still everyone had chance since we have total six question. Uh, few question related to today topic and few question you will have from like in general knowledge from Microsoft. Okay. So still I have seen like I I have seen like many events well uh, like uh, on top they didn't get chance but other got so
okay so we'll go to leader board again okay so we'll move for next question We'll see next leaderboard. Okay, so Kalyani, Tarun, and Sasank on top three points. Okay, next. Like I told, like you will get from two event and few question from like your general concept in Microsoft. Okay, so we'll go for next question. Okay, so whenever you see double point, then you will get double point in that question. And all question are very basic. But if you will see clearly and if you will try to answer then hopefully like you can answer all correct answer okay and we have next last question Okay, so we'll see who all are winner for today event. Okay, uh, so what I will do, I will take one screenshot and then, so all TVA winner, what you can do, so, your email id okay better let me share my email id you can uh, drop mail and uh, you can mention like you are trivia winner of today event okay so you can drop a mail to this email id and you can mention like you are winner of today trivia event Okay, so there are a few other information. So if anyone want to like join our WhatsApp group or Telegram group for Hong Kong meetup, so you can join this link. Okay, let me send uh, this link on cha in chat also. So you will keep getting update here whenever we will have any new events. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Congrats, uh, trivia winner. So uh, you can you can drop a mail to uh, like uh, this mail ID, Saravi IND. Okay, and uh, if you are if you or any problem, then you can connect me on what like you can connect me on Tele. Uh, sorry, LinkedIn. Okay. Okay. So you want to join our telegram group or whatsapp group so you can follow that link i already shared on chat so you can join that link and and we'll keep updating whenever there will be new events 